about 66 million years ago, long before Transylvania became synonymous with vampires, it was home to something even scarier, giant flying carnivores. But the dinosaurs on the Transylvanian island Hatzeg experienced something called island dwarfism, meaning they ended up much smaller than their mainland relatives due to limited resources. So, unlike other continents with big predators like Tyrannosaurus rex, these islands didn't have giant predators. But it wasn't all safe, because in the sky above the ancient sea, there was a huge monster. It was the heaviest creature to ever fly, with wings as wide as an airplane, and a mouth so big it could swallow a human whole. No animal in Europe was safe from the Hetzogopteryx, the Romanian dragon. Now, believe it or not, the monster part of its name was no exaggeration. This giant pterosaur earned this title because of its truly absurd size. Full-grown Hetzogopteryx individuals were thought to have a wingspan comparable to the Quetzalcoatlus, which is a whopping 11 meters, 36 feet in length, or maybe even more. To put it in perspective, that's as wide as a regular Cessna 172 plane. Some experts even believe Hetzogopteryx might have been a bit larger, with its humerus, one of the arm bones, being longer than that of the Quetzalcoatlus. This could push the estimated wingspan limit to an incredible 12 meters, 39 feet, and that's the largest ever recorded for any pterosaur or bird. But it's not just the wingspan. This flying giant was built like a tank, incredibly robust compared to its relatives. It stood at a remarkable height of 5 meters, 16.5 feet, similar to a giraffe. This combo of height, wingspan, and insane robustness makes you wonder, how much did this guy weigh? Well, even though its exact weight has never been officially estimated, Hetzogopteryx is often considered not only the heaviest and biggest pterosaur, but also the largest terrestrial predator in Europe around 66 million years ago. A good estimate puts it around the size of a modern black bear, which is somewhere around 300 kilograms. Interestingly, it owes much of its massive size to its choice of residence. I'll explain how. You see, Europe was a vast archipelago during its existence, with small, medium and large islands scattered around. One of these islands was Hatzeg, believed to be comparable in size to present-day Ireland. This island was no easy commute, surrounded by over 300 kilometers or 190 miles of deep ocean in every direction, making it incredibly isolated. But what's really amazing, or should I say unfortunate for some, is that Hatzeg Island was a predator's paradise, with very few competitors. Unlike mainland Europe, there were no giant theropods roaming the island, and overall predator numbers were low. This created the perfect conditions for Hetzogopteryx to claim the title of top predator and thrive without much competition or threat from other creatures. But its body wasn't the only thing that increased in size. It had a freakishly giant skull that stretched a whopping 2.5 meters, or 8 feet and 2 inches, one of the largest skulls ever recorded for a non-marine animal. This gigantic head was truly unique among all pterosaurs. Unlike the usual slender skulls of its relatives, Hetzogopteryx had a head that was ridiculously robust and sturdy, adorned with large ridges. These ridges hinted at the presence of mighty muscles, suggesting this pterosaur meant serious business. Most pterosaurs had skulls with a streamlined shape, but this one had a head that was exceptionally strong and durable. It could probably take a bad beating and still come out on top. As for its neck, it was short, broad, and surprisingly strong. Studies reveal that Hetzogopteryx had a neck about half the length expected for a pterosaur of its size. But don't let that shorter length fool you. This neck was insanely powerful. Ridges on the neck served as muscle attachment points providing an extra layer of durability. Researchers even discovered that this Frankenstein neck could withstand forces up to 10 times its total body weight. This unusual strength, combined with its massive skull and jaw proportions, hint at something extraordinary. Hetzogopteryx wasn't no ordinary pterosaur. It was a dinosaur killer. You heard that right. This pterosaur operated on a whole different level when it came to hunting, and by that I mean it likely preyed on animals that were too large to fully swallow. In this case, the prime suspects are dinosaurs. While Hatzik Island played a role in turning Hetzogopteryx into a giant, 
it also played a part in downsizing other creatures like dinosaurs. The limited resources on the island restricted the growth of dinosaurs, resulting in the presence of numerous dwarf dinosaurs, such as relatively tiny hadrosaurs and even titanosaurs. These dwarf dinosaurs on the island, including juveniles and adults, may have fallen victim to Hetzagopteryx, with its gigantic skull being its main weapon of choice. If you're wondering how it went about its deadly business, well, scientists believe it killed larger prey by either stabbing or bludgeoning the poor animal to death. But of course, dinosaurs weren't all it ate. Paleontologists generally think that Hetzagopteryx was a terrestrial generalist forager. In simpler terms, this meant it spent most of its time on land, hunting anything within its reach that wasn't too challenging. Take fish, hard-shelled organisms, crocodilians, and mammals, for instance. Hatsik Island, where Hetzagopteryx lived, had a dense forest-like environment that made it hard for animals to move around. There were also lots of rivers and streams, along with thick bushes and lush plants, creating a lively place. Sadly, all this life had to deal with was the scary Hetzagopteryx. The island was home to various animals, like dwarf dinosaurs such as Magyarosaurus, Zalmoxus, Struthiosaurus, and some unnamed ones. Three different kinds of flying reptiles from the Asdarkidae family lived there, ranging from 3.5 meters, 11.5 feet, to 5 meters, 16.4 feet. Other predators like Heterodontosaurus were around too, but none were as big as Hetzagopteryx. So this flying monster was the largest carnivore of its habitat, ruling both the land and the skies. As far as the climate goes, the place had a really nice climate. It was like a tropical paradise, because back then, Europe was warmer than it is now. So, we're talking about a subtropical climate with lots of tropical plants and plenty of vegetation. Now, while Hetzagopteryx spent most of its life on land, this colossal creature was still fully capable of taking to the skies. Yes, even with its large size, it could actually fly pretty well. But since it looked a bit chunky, scientists think it had a smart way to make its heavy head lighter for flying. Inside its skull, there were many empty spaces, making it not as heavy as it seemed, but still strong. Its wings were special too, with spaces that were kind of like styrofoam. These spaces likely helped it fly better. To take off, Hetzagopteryx might have used a move similar to jumping with its legs. Flying helped it find places to hunt and explore its home, Hatsig Island, where it was the big boss as the top predator. The fossils of this massive carnivore were first discovered all the way back in the 1970s, when a student-led dig team in Romania stumbled upon this massive discovery, two substantial pieces of a skull and humerus. These bones were so enormous that at first, paleontologists thought they must have found a new kind of theropod, a group of dinosaurs that includes the fearsome T-Rex. However, upon closer inspection of the bone's structure and shape, they realized they were dealing with something different a monstrous pterosaur. Despite its impressive size, this formidable creature remained relatively unnoticed for quite some time after its discovery. In fact, it took over 30 years until 2002 for it to finally get a name, Hetzagopteryx tambima, the Hatsig Basin wing monster. The Hatsig part refers to the prehistoric Hatsig Island, the place this mighty pterosaur called home. Since then, Two more specimens were found in the San Petru and Sebes formations between 2010 and 2013. One consisted of a scapular coracoid, while the other included a single large neck vertebrae. In 2017, some paleontologists suggested these specimens might not belong to Hetzagopteryx, but due to a lack of evidence for another large pterosaur and similarities in internal bone structure, they were eventually described as Hetzagopteryx of an indeterminate species. Additionally, in 2018, two fused mandibles from a giant pterosaur were discovered in the densest Chiula formation. Although it can't be confidently identified as Hetzagopteryx due to limited skull material, its discovery implies that Hetzagopteryx might have had a shorter and more blunt skull. The findings also revealed that pterosaur fossils in the Hatsig Basin were not as rare as initially believed. Hetzagopteryx belongs to a big family of pterosaurs called Asdarkidae, these Asdarkidae are part of a larger group of almost completely toothless pterosaurs known as Asdarkidaea, which also includes other lineages like Tapayuromorpha and Dusangaruptaris. Asdarkidae split off from a closely related group called Chaoyangopteridae around 125 million years ago, 
during the early Cretaceous period. Even though we haven't found the common ancestor for both groups yet, scientists have accepted this grouping for a long time. The first Asdarkidae appeared in the fossil record about 108 million years ago, filling the skies as other pterosaurs disappeared between the early and late Cretaceous. Asdarkidae, along with another group of pterosaurs called Pteranodontoidea, lived until the late Cretaceous, specifically the Maastrichtian stage. In the late Koniakian stage, the first Asdarkidae, Thanatos Draken Amaru appeared. It led the way for this group, and later on, Hetzegopteryx became the last mainland pterosaur. Even though it didn't get much attention right after its discovery in 2002, people became interested in it because of its huge size, which could rival Quetzalcoatlus. Its popularity soared even more after it was showcased in the 2011 BBC documentary series Planet Dinosaur. In the final episode, titled Great Survivors, it was depicted hunting and swallowing a Megurosaurus whole. After that, it took a while for Hetzegopteryx to appear in another documentary, which happened in the 2022-2023 series Prehistoric Planet. In seasons 1 and 2, it was featured in forest and island episodes, hunting Zalmoxis, and portrayed as an island hopper, hunting Tethy Shadros, a hadrosaur from Italy. In video games, Hetzegopteryx made its debut in Fossil Fighters Champions, and later on, it appeared in mobile games such as Jurassic World The Game and Jurassic World Alive. This terrifying pterosaur had the ability to potentially travel thousands of miles to other islands for food. It was a creature nobody wanted to mess with. However, like many other living things at the end of the late Cretaceous, including 75% of species, Hetzegopteryx and its ecosystem faced extinction. About 66 million years ago, a massive meteorite crashed into the Yucatan Peninsula in the Gulf of Mexico, causing widespread devastation. This event, known as the Chicxulub impact, created a force equivalent to 10 million Hiroshima atomic bombs. Of course, the impact led to a cloud of debris covering the atmosphere, causing environmental collapse worldwide. Hatzig Island, where Hetzegopteryx lived, was one of the many environments affected. As a result, this flying giant, along with other large predators of its time, got wiped off the face of this planet. Millions of years later, their island transformed into what we now know as Romania. Tales of great dragons and flying reptiles soaring in the skies became legends for generations. Little did they know that in a bygone age, a real flying reptile, Hetzegopteryx, once dominated the ancient skies above, the Romanian dragon of old. To wrap it up, this massive pterosaur, with its unique features and impressive flight capabilities, was a top predator of its time. Living in a lush environment filled with rivers, streams, and dense forests, it was the largest carnivore on both land and in the skies. Unfortunately, like many other species, Hetzegopteryx and its fellow inhabitants faced extinction at the end of the Mesozoic era, leaving behind a legacy that no one is about to forget anytime soon. And that's a wrap. Do you think if the Hetzegopteryx was still around, we could tame it and have it fly us around? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.